There's no denying that over the past decade, espresso has changed and evolved like no other beverage that comes to mind. So in today's video, we're gonna teach, brew, and taste two popular modern approaches to espresso, the traditional shot and the turbo shot. Welcome back friend, Kyle here, and wherever you're watching this video from, I hope you're doing well today. Thank you for clicking on this. Let's dive into this. Now, Espresso has an exciting and vibrant community of coffee lovers continually experimenting to create the best cup of coffee possible. Many of you subscribe to this channel. But Modern Espresso has shown great amelioration with recipes and methodology thought to be downright sinful in the past. Things like quick brew times and coarse grind settings would be laughed at just a few years ago. But today, breaking those rules results in often Espresso that not only tastes more vibrant highlighting some of the best attributes of a coffee, but also espresso with higher extraction yields. Now, by most standards, a traditional espresso would be one where the coffee is ground finely enough to resist water flow, enough to create resistance for nine bars of pressure. Now, the reasoning for nine bars is one with history relating to the belief pressure from older lever machines, as well as the belief that you tend to see peak flow around nine bars. Now, a conversation for a whole nother video. So this forces the water through the coffee puck to create the gooey texture shot of espresso that many know and love. Today in the cafe, this is often brew within 25 to 30 seconds at around a one to two ratio. That is one part dry coffee to about two parts espresso yield. So 18 grams of coffee in would equal about 36 grams of espresso out traditionally. So let's dive right into this. And while I grind up some coffee to brew for this espresso, uh, let me tell you quickly about my favorite specialty coffee read, Standard Magazine. Now, regardless of if you're a regular to the channel, you support this channel, or if this is the first time you click on one of my videos, I need you to know how much I love Standard Magazine. This is an incredible specialty coffee resource a magazine that comes out quarterly and ships around the world. It comes with coffee every single issue from a roaster that truly most of them I normally can't get here in Canada. And right now I'm reading an amazing article called Make Coffee Black Again, featuring one of my favorite people in coffee, Bartholomew Jones. It's a beautiful piece of art to sit on a coffee table, but the articles in here are fantastic reads. I can't recommend this enough. If you want to check out Standard Magazine, use the link in the top of the description or go to standardmag.com forward slash Kyle. If you use that link, you'll get free international shipping. Support this channel and get coffee with every single order. Go check them out. And thank you, Standard, so much for sponsoring this video. Now I'm going to be grinding this on the Niche Zero. And I know this is not probably the best grinder for maybe the turbo shot. And I'll explain why a little later. I think it's a great grinder to communicate grind sizes because it is such a gold standard in espresso grinders. So let's do this. So today I'm going to grind this at about 18 and a half on my Niche Zero. So when it comes to traditional espresso, this is familiar for most people. If you've been in a cafe setting, especially a specialty coffee cafe, this is likely what they're gonna be serving, something very similar, something with a one to two ratio, something with a gooey texture, something that is, is good with milk, it's good with black, it's good in Americanos. It's something that is more versatile, especially in a cafe setting. So when it comes to striving for the best shot possible, we've traditionally chased the idea to grind as fine as possible possible before experiencing astringency. We do this to expose as much surface area of the coffee particle as possible to raise extraction yield, often producing a more delicious cup of espresso. Over time, we've come to realize that the finer we grind our espresso, the harder it is for coffee to flow evenly through that coffee. It will have a greater resistance to the water, and in exchange, that water will find the path of least resistance, creating channels in that coffee puck. This is not a good thing, and that creates uneven extraction where certain parts of the coffee puck are extracted more than others, which creates unextracted coffee or under-extracted coffee, that is. So grinding finer can actually often result in lower extraction yields. Pretty interesting. Now, one way we're more recently combating this in traditional espresso is extending contact time to introduce longer pre-infusions at low pressure to assist in even extraction. Profiles like the Blooming Espresso by Scott Rayo uses 30 seconds of no flow to allow the puck to saturate and distribute that water. Or profiles like the Londinium or even the Slayer Shot use long, low flow to slowly even and saturate the cake. Now, if you're not sure what those mean, I have a full video that covers all of these things. You can click right up here to watch 
watch that video. So then we need to talk about the turbo shot. So unlike the traditional shot, the turbo is way faster and a shot using slightly coarser grinds with a lower dose of 15 to 17 grams of coffee and a slightly lower pressure at around six bars. Often brewed at a one to three ratio in around 15 seconds, almost half the time of a traditional shot. So for me, I'm using the niche and in this coffee, I'm grinding about three to five notches coarser than typical for my traditional espresso. Now I've dialed this in and I'm pulling 17 grams in 51 out in roughly 18 seconds now traditionally we would say that would result in sour and unpleasant coffee but the turbo shot it's not under extracted that shot I pulled was not sour like you'd expect in fact they're incredibly delicious they're vibrant if you're like me and you drink a lot of straight black espresso they're a personal favorite of mine now one thing you're gonna notice right away about the turbo shot is that it's still very much espresso as you would expect but you're gonna have a lot less texture a lot less mouthfeel than you would have on a traditional espresso shot those ooey gooey shots just don't exist on turbos and you notice on that video of the shot it comes out so quickly and for me it's got a lot of vibrancy it's got a lot of definition to the flavors of the cup I can really explain what I'm tasting I can really define the coffee experience that I'm having where with espresso sometimes the complexity of the cup can kind of really mute that definition that I'm really searching for if I'm drinking black espresso that is so what's going on here well as I mentioned earlier we know that grinding finer can result in channels and uneven extraction so the opposite it must be true. Now, if we grind coarser, we're able to reduce uneven extraction and produce higher extraction yields because the even flow of water through that puck, pair this with higher flow rates or more water essentially flowing through that portafilter, resulting in more soluble compounds being broken down and extracted from the coffee. Now, here's an illustration to help describe how this makes sense. Imagine driving a traditional gasoline power car to work every day. Most people probably do. And you take the same route that's maybe about 15 kilometers. An average day, you take about 15 minutes drive the speed limit as a good citizen. Now one day you're late and you decide to double your speed. It's an important day at work, you just can't be late. Now this day you decide to drive faster so you get to work in seven and a half minutes. Maybe your car is, I don't know, turbocharged, <laughs> you get it? Now both days you had the same driving distance from point A to point B, but the day you drove faster resulted in the amount of gasoline you used to be more while driving aggressively at higher speeds. Now something we know to be true in transportation. You burnt more fuel in the same distance in a shorter amount of time. Now, while not a perfect analogy, in the same way our espresso puck may be coarser, which may expose less surface area of those coffee particles, and our times may be shorter, which would traditionally mean we have less contact time or water flowing through that puck, but in combination of all these things, along with using lower pressure at six bars to help with the even water flow at reducing channeling, and a lower dose of coffee with a higher brew ratio of one to three, the turbo shot produces a higher extraction and ultimately has similar, if not more soluble coffee compounds in the cup. Now, a few notes about turbo shots. I wouldn't consider this to be a great drink for those wanting a good dairy beverage. If that's something that you do often, this might not be the shot for you. Now, some will disagree with the statement because the espresso will have similar extraction. I personally enjoy that greater texture from a traditional espresso mixed with milk over the thinner textures found on these modern takes on espresso. Now, the turbo shot can also benefit from a certain style of grinder. Now, it can be brewed with any grinder and I can't emphasize that enough. I'm brewing on the niche today. You can brew it with any style of grinder, but burrs that produce high uniformity in grounds and lack wider ranges of fines and boulders tend to be ideal. You know, I've talked about it on this channel and this is a topic for a whole nother video, but like a 65 millimeter flapper from SSP called their multi-purpose burrs. That's a more unimodal burr in design and the turbo shot really benefits from that style. Also, if you enjoy darker roasted coffee, this may or may not be your preferred method of choice. Now, turbo shots are great at accentuating wonderful floral, fruity, and vibrancy in coffee, but darker coffee that delivers notes of like chocolate, dark chocolate, nuts, or molasses may prefer a more traditional shot. But this is subjective, and if you're a dark roast lover, I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. So to summarize the turbo shot, it's fascinating. It goes against almost every rule I was taught as a barista and rebirths espresso methodology in a new and exciting way. But I wouldn't say it's better and honestly, neither should you. In fact, I've seen a rise in espresso lovers forcing the idea that modern espresso is king and those getting into the hobby need unimodal burrs and lack of complexity or texture to brew good espresso or 
that that tastes better and I respectfully disagree. Traditional espresso shots often have a great texture and complexity that is just hard to come by on the turbo. Depending on what you're expecting from espresso and what you prefer, you may not even enjoy the turbo shot. But if you can get past that lack of texture and enjoy nuances, delicacy and transparency of flavors on the turbo, I think you'll find it enjoyable and quite possibly preferable, especially if you're a filter coffee lover. At the very least, I'd encourage you to try it. And while you're at it, read the papers on the turbo as they're wonderfully researched and written by Dr. Hendon and Michael Camara, and I'll link those down below. Thank you guys so much for your research. Now, if you made it this far in the video, you're my favorite, and I want you to let me know by in the comments down below writing, my coffee is turbocharged. Also, if you could do me a huge favor, click that thumbs up on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, that stuff truly makes a difference and can really help this channel grow. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. Join the Discord or Patreon to talk more about turbo shots. All that stuff is linked down below. See you guys all in the next video. Peace.